Hey guys, how's it going? Masterbucks here. Welcome to another episode of the Salford City Career Mode in FIFA 20. And today, we are going to hopefully get through the entire month of December and crack over and into 2020. Yeah. And into a brand new transfer window. Yes, we are going to hopefully make some signings in this one. But first off, we have a quarter final to play in the Carabao Cup. We face South End United away. We have had the last four games that we've played in, and maybe even five games, I don't know, but we have had four at the very least away games in the Carabao Cup. I'm actually pretty confident every game we've played in the Carabao Cup has been away. Yeah, as a matter of fact, it has. The game, the first game we played was against Colchester, that mad penalty shootout game that we won 9-8. That was away. Every game we've played in the Carabao Cup has been away. Now we've made it to the quarters, and if you look at some of the teams in there, None of like the top six teams in the Premier League are there. There are some sides that are strong-ish, like Leicester City, maybe Watford or uh, Newcastle, maybe to an extent could prove to be a problem. Maybe a championship side could take it out. But we have a genuine, I think, opportunity. If we can knock off Chelsea and Man City, we have to be a threat in this competition. And we just have the juju right now in the Carabao Cup. Sadly, it's not as straightforward for us in League 2, uh, for whatever reason, but... Regardless, we are hopefully going to continue our trend of doing bits in the Carabao Cup. Could we make a semi-final? E even a semi-final is insane. I mean, if if, if we if we lose to South End United, if we lose in a court final, then okay, fine. I didn't expect us to get that far, but I'm going to be a bit disappointed considering we beat Chelsea and Man City before that. And then another Premier League team in Wolves. So to finally get knocked off and it be South End United, that would be tricky. But yeah, we have a former... Road to Glory team, one of the first Road to Glory teams that I ever did. As a matter of fact, it's probably the first Road to Glory career mode I ever did was with Salford or with uh, South End United way back in the day. Now they are standing between me and a semi-final of the Carabao Cup. Can we reach the final four? Can we take down South End? There are some players in the South End United team that I actually recognise. There is... um. Former Australian, uh, I think, I don't know if that is him, but Mark Milligan is actually the former Australian captain, the soccer captain. I think he's playing for South End United. There you see him. He's the number five in the middle. And any other names that we recognize, any at all? Maybe one or two, but really, aside from that, compare that starting 11 to every other team that we have faced, apart from Colchester in this cup run. If we've taken down all the rest, we have to be able to win this one. The pressure is on. Oh, that's a really good ball, you know. Going in for a tackle to follow. And the clearance away. Good stuff from Desouvre. A little touch there. And Rooney's going to see if we can go past him there. That's a really nice touch. Oh, that'll work, actually. It will work. One and one nil. I kind of thought I got the pass wrong. And I also thought we were going to get a penalty. Didn't need it in the end, though. I actually kind of messed up this whole attack. When I was moving it forward, I ended up passing it to Rooney, and he ended up taking a great touch to take himself around the defender. And that pass works out just... I thought the defender could have maybe cut it off, but didn't go for it. Instead, tried to chase down Whitehead, and Whitehead has put it past the keeper. Perfect, perfect start. Let's go. Ah, went in. Missed. Defending was atrocious. Absolutely fucking atrocious there. Really fucking piss poor, and Murich gets beaten at the near post. I thought even when that cross came in that, nah, there's no way he's going to end up actually finding a way to concede when he's got that much of the goal covered. But no, he managed. Look, I go in for a tackle here. I have completely fucked that up. Can't really do much about Pons not being the right side of his defender, though, but still, it starts with me getting beat at that oh, on the wing. That's, I don't know how the fuck that squeezes in. And South End have tied it right back up, and it's pretty fucking pathetic. He's on side here. He will be. The low cross. Oh, deflection and the clearance. This could be brilliant play if the cross was a little bit better. Man, that would have been real nice. Although I've given it away here. Poorly. And here they come. Oh, Rooney's been able to get past here. Oh, my God. But then he gets clipped. Referee. Apparently not a penalty. I, I, he's got the ball. We're going to fucking check. We're going to check right here. Oh, okay. So it looked like for a second from my angle that Rooney did get a touch to it first. And he does. But then he gets the ball, the defender, just as he's about to clip. All right. That was a tough one. Oh, I don't want to bring out players from my back line. That is a really good cross. Although, Murich is going to hold it. 
We have 30 seconds. I can just boot this thing forward and hope that something happens. But yeah, we didn't have enough time. So it's 1-1. We scored an off attack I thought was naturally going to result in a goal scoring opportunity. And then we make a shit mistake. One mistake on the wing. We let a defender get past. Whips across in. Super tight angle. Yet somehow managed to finish. Pretty poor from Muric there. But oh, regardless, it is 1-1. Oh no. I am going to only get a card. Yep, a yellow for that. I was genuinely trying to slide in and stop that ball from getting through. It could have been a great player position to win the ball back, but all right, so Manny's going to get a yellow card after this, but we'll have to remember that. Done well, Richie Tower. What a place to win the ball back. What a place. Going to see if we can slip in Rooney here. Rooney's going to go, and shot's gone wide. Left foot, so maybe it was harder for him. But yeah, it slices away from goal, that's why. We're passing this so quickly. Pigiani with the block, will it matter? Will it matter? We at least try to pass it away as far as we can. Oh, the fucking back heels. This is getting a bit crazy. The ball's right there, mate. Get stuck in. Murić. Oh, he actually makes a stop this time. Can we get a 90th minute winner in this one? We've seen a few 90th minute goals in the games that we've played in the Carabao Cup. Some for, some against us. Rooney, Walker. Was thinking about slipping in Walker on the right-hand side, but I didn't go for it. Desiree ray has got so much speed. Uh, he's so well covered though, unfortunately. I saw the run there as well. I'm running out of time. I'm gonna have to make my move. Eventually, the fake shot to get in through here. Can we cut this one back? Yeah, we can! Oh, we've done it again! Again! I absolutely love it! I can't believe it! They've combined to win it at the end! Thought about the cutback, thought about the cutback, committed! And got it to Manny for a tap in! I went all the way, as far as I could, to the touchline, eventually cut it back, committed to cutting it back to Manny, and it's worked. I cannot believe it. I No, mate, you should be running up and down the touchline. We've won it at the end again. I thought the defender would get in front of Rooney, but he didn't. Rooney managed to get past him to be able to cut it back, and they had no time to respond. We scored in like the third minute of two. We've done it again. It's a semi-final. I, I brought on substitutions. I replaced midfielders for strikers because I thought we were in for another shootout. But we managed to avoid it. And it's another 90th minute winner. Are we going all the way in this competition? I think fate is on our side. Well, that was absolute insanity. You know, I just sort of kept my composure there. I was really just aware and composed and wasn't panicking. I knew what I wanted to try to do and I just committed to it. And it fucking, and it worked. I, I can't believe it. Were you lucky to score the late winner? Luck will not be needed next time. Sometimes you need a bit of luck. Luck had nothing to do with it. Uh, no, I don't think, I think we put that move together about exactly the way I wanted it to. I, I, I really, I focused, I had to adapt obviously, but when we got it to Rooney and we got the fake shot to get in, we weren't going to get a look at goal. So I, I committed. I was like, this is what I need to try to do. And it worked. Oh, I can't believe it. Do you feel you can win the Carabao Cup? We can. We absolutely can. We don't have any other top six big Premier League teams left in the competition. We've knocked two of them out. Why can't we? And how difficult was it to stop South End United from creating chances? Wasn't easy. We can learn. We just played our game. Yeah, sure. How about that? And that takes the team around very happy. All we have to do now is... Uh, wait. For the other, uh, there were up uh, there are two other games that need to be played in the quarterfinals, and we will know who we have in the semis in hopefully a little while. But let's uh, continue on with these drills. Sam Hughes, the goalkeeper, we're training up at the moment in the youth academy, getting up to a 56. And we've also got yet another game in the FA Cup to play. This one's against Cambridge. Although to be honest, ah oh, look, go, you know, going deep in the FA Cup as well would be cool. But this is the cup competition I want to really focus on now. I think we can give this one a sim. Uh, we've got a game against Exeter against League, in League 2. Depending on how good they are, we'll maybe give them a simulation as well. Colchester, I might play because it's an away game, and I might do the same for Bradford. But we have actually received a notification saying that a match has been rescheduled, and that means we know who we're, who we're going to face in the semi-finals. Derby County are who we face in the semi-finals. We will take them on in a two-legged fixture, of course. And are we going to be playing a Carabao Cup final? That would be mad. It would be absolutely insane. We could be the first team since, I think, Bradford City to be a League 2 team and make the final of that competition. 
Are we going to get a win in this one? Yes, we do as well in the FA Cup against Cambridge. So we're going once again to the third round and another chance to play another Premier League team. I mean, goodness me, we are doing unbelievably in the cup competitions, except for obviously the Checker Trade Trophy, whatever. Um, but in the League 2, actual league, the thing that we need to do well in to get promoted to the next league, we don't seem to, we seem to be underperforming. But anyway, on to the next one. I am going to stick with this five at the back uh, defense and we're making changes like Smith and Jones going in and I'll start all the main guys, but I will have to rotate. I know that. And something I'm actually going to do or something I'm thinking of doing, especially in the lead up to January, when I can make some signings and I feel more comfortable doing it, I'm going to switch up my formation. I was happy to stick with the five at the back because I feel like it would give me a bit more... Um, it would help me out defensively, obviously. Uh, for the beginning of this career mode on Ultimate Difficulty, I'd be able to sort of, you know, use it as a, you know, uh, so that way I'm just nice and secure at the back, and it's a good good formation for maybe for me to start on. And um, I felt like that was true, but now I'm starting to think, because we've got, you know, some decent wingers, higher rated wingers, and we brought in some fullbacks and stuff, I'm genuinely thinking, I like the two strikers up top. I'm thinking I might go to, I'm not even joking, a traditional standard 4-4-2 formation, and I'm not even kidding. Because I want two strikers up top. Uh, I don't want to go too crazy with it. I think I might genuinely switch to some variation of the 4-4-2. I'm still going to stick with the 5-3-2 formation that I've been playing with right now. Because for the most part, I feel like it's been working. But uh, we will um, we'll eventually make that move. For now, this is the team, and let's get out there. To be doing so well in all the cup competitions, it will mean nothing if A... We either don't go on to win any of the cup competitions, especially the bloody Carabao Cup, and B, if we end up just, you know, failing to get promoted in League 2, and we have to go through yet another season in League 2, that is going to be brutal. I really do not want that if I can avoid it. And listen, if we don't do back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back promotions up in the Premier League, I will live with that. I don't even think I'll be able to manage that. But first season, I was really hoping to get promoted, and it's still possible. It's just automatic promotion which seems to be slipping away. We we need to start racking up points. Oh, it squeezed in! Oh, ho, ho. I was quiet throughout all that because I didn't honestly think I'd get a goal there. I should have cut it back. That would have been the right thing to do. There was a man running at the far post. In the end, I was like, oh, man, I think I've ruined this because I didn't expect that through ball to take me so far wide. How has that managed to get in? It's a little bit like in the last game. Titus of Angle, defender closing, and the goalkeeper's got the near post covered. There's no right for that to be squeezing through. How has Richie Tao pulled that off? I do not have a clue how we've just taken the lead there. Good footwork. Oh, from Smith. Lovely. And now we might get a bit of an overlapping run from throw Keld hit. Oh, fucking... You can't just... Oh... I don't think I've done a single thing of note with Throwkel. At least nothing positive anyway. Oh, there, look, he can throw the ball. That's good to see. Nice. Opening up here, chance. Gap up the middle. Look, the four centre-backs all bunch up there. And then... No! 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 Please! That was an amazing move, and it's ruined by one bad pass. The final pass. That would have been, honestly, maybe the best move that I had put together. And we were robbed because the cutback was put behind him. Low overalls, man. They will cost you goals. Jackson is away now on the counter. If they get a goal, I swear, after we should have gone 2-0 up. Thankfully, they don't. And again, I don't think we'll have time. We just launch it forward, hope for a miracle. We never do. 1-0 should be 2. Should be 2. Who was the guy that cut it back? Was it Whitehead, I thought? I, I didn't get a good look exactly at who it was. But it should be 2-0. That was such a good move. It deserved to have been finished off. What a ball. What a ball. What a fucking pass. League 2 players are pulling off bicycle kick passes. Are you kidding me? Ultimate difficulty is just on another level. And then comes the cross. Murich can only just palm it away. Oh man, that pass went way too close to the defender for my liking. But we get there. We've gone around Whitehead. Oh, the right-hand side. It's taken me a while to see uh, Brody Throwkel getting up. And could go the whole way here, mate. I might even try it. I might even try it. Feels like Colchester just, every time they get it, they counter-attack and they're fast. I do not catch them. They go down one wing and they whip across in. But we actually stop across this time. Great chase. Decent delivery on this one. 
Although it changes players right at the last second. Am I going to get here first? I do, but the ball, I don't know, somehow gets behind me and now they keep it. We are literally only a few seconds away from stoppage time and here we go. Two minutes. Two minutes and I'm happy just to sort of do whatever I can to get the ball off them. We've managed it. I'm going to whack it down the field here. Oh, they're going to get it back though. You're kidding me. But they run out of play. That has lost them the game. If there was any miracle chance of them tying it up anyway. That is what happens when you give up the ball with 10 seconds to go like that. And just, oh, horrific stuff. Awful for them. But we have gotten ourselves another win. A goal that I don't know how we managed to squeeze it in. Richie Tower, 1-0 victory. It should have been 2-0, I swear. That second half was just literally back and forth. And really just ultimately a whole load of nothing. But did what we needed to in that one. Like a lot of League 2 games, we've done what we needed to. Straight into player training once again to follow. We get three A-rated drills right there. That is unreal to see. He's up to a 67. And yeah, like I said before, I was thinking about switching up the formation, but uh, when I'm playing okay, I'm, I'm wondering if that's the best thing to do. Like, uh, I just don't know. But we'll move on ahead now. The next game against Exeter City, I think we'll probably give this one a quick sim. It is a home game. Very inconsistent. A loss, a win, and a draw. What do we get at home? A 2-0 win! They're actually starting to pay out now. Throw kill does get a goal, as does Whitehead. And I tell you what, just like that, just after stringing a couple of wins together, we now actually have a pretty good spot in the table. We are up in a third. We do have uh, a game rescheduled here again. I wonder if that's for the FA Cup. And we also have, what, a risk of losing Chris Neal, like Wiseman, Leatheran, and Shelton. Oh, boy. And to be honest, they're all players that... All the players over 22 that I could lose on pre-contracts, they're all players I kind of don't really care if I lose anyway. It's just the very tiny amount of transfer uh, money that I might be able to bring in if I were to sell them. Regardless, we can move on and just play this one against Bradford City away. Yet another one in League 2. And if we can actually go and get back-to-back-to-back, -to -back -to -back, almost a back wins, that'll be a sudden massive surge of points. And we will actually be... I think potentially, no, we were already in third. We were already in now the automatic promotion spots. But like I said, I'm not just trying to get up into the top three or just finish top seven. Like I, I really want to try to aim to win League Two if we can. Uh, automatic promotion is the main goal, but you try to get there by winning the whole thing. I find I'm starting to play a little bit better. The simulated games are starting to pay out, so we're getting a decent amount of points coming in, and it's showing. We already faced one of my former Road to Glory teams in South End United in the uh, what quarterfinal of the Carabao Cup. Now we are going to face another one of my Road to Glory teams, Bradford City. These are all massive throwback career modes, but uh, we were able to get a win against South End. Are we able to get a win against Bradford City? James Vaughan, I recognize. I recognize who else? Uh, Anthony O'Connor, Joe Riley plays on the bench. Anyone like that? I, oh, goodness. I don't know. There are, there are some. They are playing themselves. The simple 4-4-2 formation, the one that I'm almost kind of thinking of potentially adopting myself. But we are now underway with yet another League 2 match. Tafolo's been dispossessed. Ishmael's away. Tafolo won't catch him. The cross is just going to come in. Thankfully, it's not a good one, and Murich is going to get it. And we're going to hopefully go quick. Yeah, you better believe that we will. Let's go. Tao. Manny, over the top here. If we can... Uh... Oh, lucky bounce here. Very lucky indeed. Oh, but too close to... Oh, too close to the keeper. They're just pulling off some fucking madness right now. I brought forward one of my centre backs. Oh, it might not matter. No, it will matter. They jump higher than us as well. Cross comes in. Please just stay in front. Murich is... Little palm away is enough. And now here we go. Maynard. Maynard! Of course we would end up behind him. And... Oh, I thought... How didn't they take the lead? I thought for sure that was it. They got the bounce. They got on their way. How is this missed? It's gone... What? Wide and yet somehow hit like the little pole that keeps the net up. I honestly wouldn't have thought it would have been possible for that ball to have hit that pole from that angle. I, okay. Mental. Our fucking passing in this game has been absolutely appalling. And some of the ball control displayed as well by a few players in my team have been piss poor. I keep giving away. I keep giving away the ball so poorly. Attack the ball. I really just attack the ball. Really not happy with this first half. They have definitely had so much more of the ball than us. And when we've had the ball and we've had to transition from our own third to try to get 
into an attacking scenario. Just bad, pl bad, badly placed passes, just not good skills being shown right here. It's just not in this first half anyway. Don't know if we put that down to the lower overalls, the fact that it's raining a little bit, but it was just overall pretty shit. I'm going to try to change my approach in this one. We're going to try to hold the ball up a little bit more, dominate possession, and slowly build up to chances instead. Couldn't stop the cross. Murich has actually had to do a lot of work in this game without having to make too many saves. I see Manny. Is he still going to be on side? He was on side for so fucking long there. And when I finally saw him and sent him away, took about a second or so for the player to actually pass the ball. And by the time he did, that's when the defenders got him off. Whitehead. Matt, oh, Rooney, you had a, seemed like you had a little bit of a gap there. Instead, we're going to try to get it to... Throw killed, cross, he's pretty well covered. I'm going to have to backtrack. I'll tell you what, though, here, look at this. Maynard, can he drift in, cross, and that's it! There it is! 1-0, it took 77 minutes. Finally, we score, and it's a brilliant assist from Maynard. Tried to cross it in with Threlkeld, but he was covered the whole way. Had to cut back. Saw Maynard making a run into the box. Just went around the defender. Cut it back brilliantly for Rooney. And he slots it into an empty net. 1-0 with 15 minutes to go. We've already scored one massive goal in similar fashion. It was Rooney that cut it back for Manny on that occasion. Now, it's this time Rooney that gets to stick it into the empty net. He gets to finish it off. And are you kidding me? I was wondering where one of their players was here for a second. Thought he just was kicking it straight out of bounds. Paul Boyle. Oh, let's not bring out any of our fullbacks, please. I'm trying to switch this whole fucking time to one player. How hard is it to get it to... I was trying to get it to this guy. If you wanted to look back, Richie Tao, that's who it was. Jesus, how is it so hard? Manny tried to get it to uh, the left side. Oh, wow, that's a really poor pass. I didn't expect it to be that heavy a touch. Jesus, I preempted the slide tackle. Hope this doesn't do me over. Cruyff turn, every fucking player in this game does it. Ishmael, Riley, Colvile, tackle this time, and that is that. A little tangle up after the tackle, but we see out yet another 1 0 win. We're just getting it done in League Two. Only just, but another three points. The wins are starting to stack up now, and it's making me very, very happy. I think we've only got two games left in December. We'll sim them all, get to January. And then we'll, uh, I don't know, potentially do some other stuff as well. I uh, I figured since we're getting toward the start of a brand new month and we'll get another batch of monthly scouting updates in, I have not been getting many good players. And I've seen a few of you suggest this. I was thinking it as well. I did it in the uh, journey career mode before we ended FIFA 19. And now I think I'm going to do it for this one. Every, I'm thinking almost, almost every season... I'm going to scout a future star, but just one. Only one future star will I scout. And I'm going to go for, why not? I know they're only a League 2 side, but we're actually going to go for the best, highest rated scout a future star one that you can get. And from there, maybe we'll be a little bit more reserved. But we are going to sign right here, right now to end this episode, the best, hopefully, uh, you know, icon player, the star man of this career mode. We will see who he will end up being, but let's go ahead and pick him up. Chris Neal, I'm glad you've decided to sell me. I haven't been all that keen to play here, and I think it's time to move for a... Yep, glad we're aligned. I am looking to sell him, but there was one other thing I wanted to look at, and that was that a scout has been dispatched. We will see a brand new Youth Academy or, you know, future star pop up at the beginning of the new month when we hit January, when we hit 2020. And look at that, we've already got an offer for Chris Neal, and I'm ready to take anything I can for any of the players I've got transfer listed, especially the older players that are all about to leave, like, this year, this season. But now, time for a little simulation here. Crew Alexandria, once again with a home team, finishes 1-1. They scored and took the lead. We responded immediately and got an equaliser. That was that, though. And our winning streak, we won a fair few games in a row. We'll go back and look, but... It's finally come to an end, and we've picked up an injury as well to Manny. Thankfully, it's not that bad. It's a seven-day injury. He'll be ready for the, like, the next game we actually play in the next episode. And the final game that we play is against Oldham Athletic. And of course, by play, you know what I mean. We're going to simulate it. It will be an away game. We've been doing okay, but it's two back-to-back -back draws in the last two games of the month. And it was bloody Danny Whitehead again. He's starting to score quite a fair few goals for me as well, even in sim games. But... 
now the table looks a little bit more um, relaxing for us to look at. Colchester and Macclesfield are first and second. We are seven points away from top spot, and we've pretty much ticked over the halfway point now that we're up to 24 games played if it's a 46-game season. Although, let's be honest, you still have teams that like Port Vale, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th all have a game left to play on us, so it's probably still a lot closer than you would imagine. The top of the table has been so close for the longest of time. We've hit the halfway mark of the season. We're in Je we're nearly in January, and yet it's still like there's still like probably 10 plus teams that maybe still could win it, honestly. And probably like 12 to 15 teams that maybe could still get promoted. Maybe not 15, but like 12 definitely. Danny Whitehead, I told you he was on a bit of a goal scoring tear. He has picked up 13 goals now for the season, and he's overtaken Adam Rooney as our highest goal scorer. So our two highest goal scorers, or, you know, two equal, we've got Danny Whitehead with 13, Rooney with 12, obviously. Richie Tell, we're getting between our centre midfielders and our strikers the most goals. And then there's a huge gap between Manny Desiree in fourth place and the rest, like Tofolo is our fifth highest goal scorer, and there's a seven goal gap there. Crazy stuff. But we did go on a one, two, three, four, five game win streak before we eventually drew to Crew Alexandria and drew to Oldham. So we went undefeated in the month of December, which I normally don't do. December for me, I, I've noted in the past, has been a bit of a tough month for me because I was, I don't know, I seem to play crap and want to be, and I get angry at certain players and I sell them in the following month in January. But anyway, we now have our monthly scouting updates that have come through and we have our scout returning with our future star. Who is going to be the icon player of this career mode. Ladies and gentlemen, can I introduce you to Pedro? Now this could be either Jesus or Jesus. We honestly can just do whatever. I think we can vote on it. We can. It Should it be Pedro Jesus or Pedro Jesus? As a matter of fact, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna have two comments down below in the comment section of this video. And we can decide, are we pronouncing it Jesus or are we pronouncing it Jesus? Like say, Gabriel Jesus. Um, I don't know. I might be totally off the mark here and everyone in Brazil pronounces Jesus as Jesus. I don't know. But regardless, I don't, I don't care. We are going to make it. I'm letting you guys decide. Pedro Jesus slash Jesus is our superstar future star. And we already have a Brazilian playing for a League 2. Actually, to be fair, that's not too crazy. There have been some South American players that have played in League 2. I know there are some fire like... Portuguese and European players that are playing even non-league football in England. So, I don't think it's too out the way and it's a little something special. And I think Salford City are definitely the exception to the rule considering their situation. But here's a right midfielder who obviously is going to have some pace. These are not final stats as we know. These are more potentials. But still, he'll have technical attributes and stuff. Things like ball control and crossing. I'll hopefully want to work on his finishing's decent. His volleys are alright. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see how he ends up there. But a six foot one winger... Interesting. He's got an overall of 56. You would hope that'd be a bit higher. That's not high enough for him to get into our starting 11 right now. So we'll have to train him a bit. And his potential also is, you know, it's it's good. It's a max 94, minimum 73 though. I was kind of hoping it'd be, the minimum potential would be like around 80 or something. So I would imagine it's his final potential would probably be something like mid 80s to... Hopefully high, uh, hopefully high 80s if we're lucky, but I'm assuming it's going to be mid 80s. That's still a player that is going to last us a very long time. Hell, what am I talking about? He's going to be here for the whole damn career mode, hopefully, so long as he's a solid player and I play well with him. Looking in the uh, in the first scout report, and why am I surprised? No one decent. Duncan Stewart, the highest rated, and the value is shocking. And in England, i got to be honest with you, I'm not seeing much else. Oh my god. I'm so, yeah, this is the only way that we're going to get any decent Youth Academy players in is if we scout future stars. But anyway, I'm just going to go straight ahead and sign Pedro Jesus or Jesus to the senior team. We're promoting him straight away, and I'll take a look at other players in the team and see if there's anyone worthwhile. Sean Hughes is who I am training up, and he's our best uh, goalkeeper. The other one's not very high potential, to be fair. Neither is Sean Hughes, but uh, at least he's higher overall, so we'll maybe promote him as well. Uh, if you turn 17, I'm going to sign you up as well. Oh my god, so we've got... Literally, what, eight players. John Ross is 18, and then these two that are 17 as well. Just so that way we don't lose them, and we didn't sign them for nothing. But that will do it for this episode. I reckon we'll leave it at the beginning of January. We will make some transfers. We'll make some pre-contract signings, hopefully, as well as getting into not only more FA Cup action, 
Carabao Cup semi-finals, but League Two games as well. And we are pretty much on, you know, almost the home stretch in this season after we finish this transfer window. Until the next episode and a very busy month of January, my name is Master Bucks. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and have a good one.